Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie and today I'm going to be giving you my Mental Health-a-thon TBR. Mental Health-a-thon is a readathon focusing on mental health and mental illnesses and it is all the way through the month of May and it was created by Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books. I will leave the information for the readathon down in the description below if you are interested. So this readathon basically has like a bingo board of different challenges to participate in. Basically each box is either a reading prompt or focuses on a particular mental illness. There are several different reading prompts and you do not have to check off all of the boxes in order to participate. So I am going to be participating but I will not have the time to read a book for every single one of the prompts. But I do have a stack of books here that I am planning on reading in the month of May to participate in Mental health -a -thon. And pretty much uh, Basically, the only books I'm going to be able to read this month are probably going to be from this stack of books right here because I don't know if I can read that many books. We'll see. I do have some fairly short ones on this list. For a book that has anxiety rep, I'm either going to be reading This Song Will Save Your Life by Leela Sales or Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I know both of these books uh, focus on a character with anxiety. And I know I really want to read this one soon. I'm just not sure if I'll have the time to commit to a larger book like this. And then I've also really been wanting to read this one for a while since I bought it. So it really just depends on my mood as to which one I decide to read this month. For a book with depression rep, I'm going to be reading The Program by Suzanne Young. This is actually a dystopian book, I believe, and in this world, suicide has become an epidemic. So they basically herd teenagers up and send them into this treatment program to cure them of their depression by erasing all of their memories. I'm excited to read it because I feel like it'll give it a, a unique spin on mental illness and dystopian. If I decide that I'm not in the mood to read this book, I also have plenty of other options to choose from. So if I don't feel like reading this one, I'll be okay. For a book with PTSD rep, I am going to be reading Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. I know this is a classic. So I know this one is going to be good and it's very short and I think it's going to be a hard hitting one but that I will really enjoy it. And as someone who has experienced PTSD symptoms, I think I will see a lot of myself in this book which I am excited and also nervous about. <laughs> I do not have PTSD, but like I said, I have experienced symptoms of PTSD in the past. I just didn't meet all the qualifications to diagnose me with PTSD. Uh, but I definitely, um, this one may hit home for me in a very uncomfortable way. But I do think it will help me grow as a person and maybe it will even be a positive step in my recovery. For a book with eating disorder rep, I have Just Listened by Sarah Dessen. I've only read one Sarah Dessen book before and I really liked it and I own several of her books. And when I was researching for a book with eating disorder rep, this came up and I was like, um, I had no idea that this book dealt with eating disorders. And I know it's not actually the main focus of the story. I believe it's uh, a character's sibling that has an eating disorder. But nonetheless, I am excited to find a book that has eating disorder representation within YA. Because honestly, like as I was looking, the list was not very large at all. And I was surprised that there isn't that much eating disorder rep in YA literature. For nonfiction, I have this tiny little booklet. It's called Experiencing Grief by H. Norman Wright. And this is a book that I read the first couple chapters of when my dad passed away. Um, I was going to therapy and one of my therapists recommended reading this book. So I did, but I couldn't make my way through the whole thing at the time and I've been wanting to finish it. So my camera just stopped recording because it said my memory card was full, which doesn't even make sense because I know it's not. But anyway, I'm interested to see how my 
grieving process, how my journey differs from what the book talks about and how it may, I mean, maybe, maybe it'll be exactly like this book talks about. I'm not sure. Basically, this book is about the five stages of grief and my own grief process was a complicated grief. So I know I did not go through the five stages of grief properly if that's even like an actual thing which it's not everybody grieves differently i know grief isn't a mental illness but it's mental health a thon this is about mental health grief has a lot to do with many people's mental health so i'm including this one and the last book on my tbr is the poetic underground voyage by aaron hansen and i'm reading this to meet the requirements of reading an own voices novel this is actually a book of poetry by my favorite modern poet ever like i love aaron hansen so much but i've only read one of her poetry books but i do own the rest of her poetic underground collection and i've been wanting to read this one for like over a year still haven't made my way through it and this is the perfect time aaron writes a lot of poetry about her mental health a lot of poetry about her own depression and suicidal thoughts and self-harm and this I know will have a bunch of heavy topics in it. Her poems always speak to me even if I can't specifically relate to what she went through. She has similar thought processes to my own when I'm in like a dark mental state and I really appreciate that about her poetry because it's like I see myself in her words. That's what poetry is supposed to be about. Like even if I'm interpreting her poems differently than what she intended, like that's the beauty of poetry and I love her. Like it, it just she speaks to me on so many different levels all right that is it those are all the books that i'm planning on reading in the month of may for the mental health -a -thon. and i may not get to all of these i may read more than these and if i do happen to finish all of these i am open to going to the library and finding more books to complete more of the challenges but i am not sure that i can read any more than this who knows we'll see I think I'm going to be vlogging this whole month, but I'm just going to be strictly sticking to my reading experience of these books. So hopefully it's not that long because I really don't want to make a month long vlog that's super long because we're going to try and keep it as short as possible, which I have trouble doing. But regardless, I'm going to be vlogging this experience and I am just going to upload that vlog instead of doing a wrap up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like to participate in Mental health -a -thon, you definitely should. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more bookish content by me. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!